Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Christina Mena, and I'm the Career Professional Development Associate at the CSUN Alumni Office. Uh, we're going to get started with our program today. Um, but before we do, let me just share a couple of housekeeping items. I am uh, letting you know that today's webinar is being recorded and will be made available on our website. Um, so if there's anything that you want to review later, um, that'll be available for you. You're welcome to share it as well with friends and colleagues of yours. Um, if you have any questions during today's presentation, you're welcome to enter those into the Q&A box. If we have time towards the end, we'll try to answer some of those questions. I would like to introduce our moderator, who also is a CSUN double alum, Dr. Don A. Dennis. Dr. Dennis is a public historian teaching within the CSU system. She collaborates with museums and libraries in the greater Los Angeles area. She is a true Olympia LaPointe fan and friend, and it seems only fitting to have her welcome our very own Olympia LaPointe. So Dr. Dennis, I'll go ahead and pass on the mic to you. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to be here. Let me introduce you to Olympia LaPointe. She is named the modern day hidden figure by People Magazine and hailed the new Einstein by her fans. Olympia LaPointe is an award-winning rocket scientist, celebrity author, and TED speaker seen by over 17 million viewers on TV and multimedia platforms. From childhood poverty to dramatic adversity in her youth, Olympia rose to success by reprogramming her mind towards decisions that beat her she became one of the top five graduates out of a graduating class of 6,500 students with advanced degrees in mathematics from California State University, Northridge, and she became an award-winning rocket scientist. With a career total of launching 28 NASA space shuttle miss missions into space, Olympia helped launch the Discovery, Atlantis, Endeavor, and Discovery space shuttles. Teaching aerospace engineers how to see into the future, LayPoint won the Modern Day Technology Leader Engineer of the Year Award launch, uh, and the Boeing Professional Excellence Award. During her time launching NASA rockets, she also helped launch the technological JPL engineers used today to land on Mars, plus the satellites used for virtual technology. Today, Olympia's Mission Control Room Desk is a science exhibit at the California Science Center in Los Angeles. With international fa fans, Olympia gave the TED Talk, Reprogramming Your Brain to Overcome Fear, which has gained more than one million views worldwide. Her impact theory episode and related clips have gained more than two million views as she inspires people to pursue STEM careers. Now Olympia regularly appears on CBS News in Los Angeles as a NASA launch guest expert. Continuing the science educational legacy of Hidden Figures movie, NASA mathematicians Katherine Johnson and Mary Jackson, Olympia herself is the founder of Answers Unleashed, a science self-help educational book series and online multimedia international platform geared to produce the next generation of global innovators. Her educational entertainment platform inspires everyone. Today, we are so honored to see Olympia and hear from her as she releases her new book, Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want, with a foreword written by retired NASA astronaut Robert Kerbeam, Answers Unleashed 2 is a thrilling self-help book that reveals Olympia's triumphant story together with her new decision-making science. Readers discover the six decisions to create the future that they want with Olympia's knowledge. She has recently been featured on ABC News, NBC News, CBS News, Fox News, Adam Carolla's podcast, and Amazon Prime TV to over a half a million viewers with her new book. I am very honored to introduce my colleague and my friend, Olympia LaPointe. Thank you. Olympia. How are you today? I am Olympia LaPointe, and I want to thank you 
from the bottom of my heart for coming today to find out about the six key decisions that will change the course of your life. Now, we are here during a pandemic. We are here doing a Zoom. Normally, this would be a TED-like talk at the California State University campus through the Alumni Association, but we are here online. And we are going to take home with us key factors, key decisions, key science that's going to allow us to move forward in such a profound way, in such a magnificent way, that we will then create the future that we want. Now, this, this is really a new concept. It's 2021, and what I'm going to share with you today is groundbreaking. It is a new decision-making science that everyone can use to create the future that they want, but specifically so they can jump into the future that they want and then come back to the present moment and make six decisions to get there. Now, does that seem far-fetched? Does that seem like that's almost like impossible? Well, that's what I thought too. Until I had to use the process in which I'm going to show you today in order to save my life. Yeah, you heard me correctly. What I learned isn't just from a book. It's from real life experience. It's what I learned not only to become an award-winning rocket scientist from upbringing in from the worst type of situations, the triggering situations that you can imagine, but it was also used for me to move forward in my health and in my life. I don't speak about things just randomly. I don't write about things randomly. I write about things that's going to change people's lives because what I learned through my own situation, through everything in which I encountered, changed my life. My prayer at this moment in time, that if you are watching, this information will change your life too. What we're about to see is something called quantum deciding. It is a new science theory. Nowhere has seen this information before. You are the first people to see it. And this information is going to be posted on California State University alumni's page, as well as my Answers Unleashed page under the virtual talks. You're going to be able to take notes. I, I highly encourage you to get a piece of paper, get a pen, because what I'm going to tell you today is going to blow your mind. The science in which I'm going to reveal this theory will change lives in such a profound way, and I am excited to share it with you. But, but before I do it, I have to break down some science for you. Now, if you know anything about my background, you know I helped launch 28 missions into space. And I did not have the pristine preparation to do that. Rather, I grew up in the probably one of the hardest areas of close to South Central Los Angeles. It was very tough. And I had to make these six decisions to actually become a rocket scientist. But then I wasn't consciously aware of what I had to do. And I wasn't consciously aware of how science was going to work. Now, before we go into this talk, I want to break down something, and I'm going to break it down with these two die. These is like play die in front of me right here. And science is about everything that I do. And I'm going to break down to you a science before we start. It's Albert Einstein's quantum entanglement science. And it sounds like a mouthful, but I'm going to break it down to you in such a profound way because I'd like you to keep this in your mind as we go through this talk. You see, Albert Einstein's quantum entanglement theory was simple. If two particles collide and then they separate, 
that co original collision is going to connect these two particles in such a profound way that they'll contain a secret communication between one another. Like for example, if these two particles collide, there exists a silent quantum communication between these two particles, in this case it's two die, that when one moves, let's say it lands on a two, the other one, a couple seconds later, would also land on a two. Is that possible? Hmm. So if let's say this one would land on a three, so would this one. What Albert Einstein saw is that when two particles collide, there exists a quantum communication. As one takes on properties, so does the other. Doesn't matter how much time or how much space is between these two particles. The concept in which I'm going to introduce to you tonight uses that concept to help you create the future that you want. Are you ready? I know I am. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna share with you a presentation in which I created. This presentation is gonna show us the science of attraction, what makes this quantum deciding work. It's going to show you the reason why it's gonna be so powerful in how you make decisions. And lastly, I'm gonna share with you the six decisions that's gonna help you attract the future that you want. Let's do it. Quantum deciding, make six decisions for the future that you want. It comes from my latest book, Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want. Now, I want to thank you. I want to thank these individuals for really endorsing this book and going through it and really putting their seal of approval on it. It was retired NASA astronaut Robert Kirby. Fran Irvin, who is award-winning film producer, Steve Hobart, which is commercial space launch executive, Dr. Mark Schilling, who is an award-winning math professor at California State University, Northridge, executive Sandra Washington, who is the CEO of Admin Global, Dr. Don Dennis, who you saw introduce us, one of my dear friends, and I'm so honored to have her do the introduction. Dr. T. Fox, who is at California State University, Los Angeles. Athena Dwan, who is a marriage family therapist. Raylene Taylor, social clinical worker. And Dr. Drew Sams, which is the head pastor at Beller Church. Your decisions count, literally. Your decisions have power. You, and you actually have multiple futures that exist. I, I know that's going to blow your mind away, but I'm going to share a perfect example for you to see that. Because you get a chance to pick the future that you want. And it's called quantum deciding. You see, uh, I here I am at six years old. Uh, I had three possible futures in front of me. I grew up in, if anyone knows where, 55th and Hoover is in Los Angeles. That was in the 1980s, the heart of gang violence in South Los Angeles. And it was one of the toughest areas that existed. And I actually had three futures in front of me. I could have been in gang violence. I could have been a victim of it. I could have dropped out from school or I could have become a rocket scientist. Now, fortunately, I picked this future, being, becoming a rocket scientist. And I didn't know that I was subconsciously making these six decisions all along at all. 
until something happened years later. You see, I became a rocket scientist and through that science, I helped launch the space shuttle and I watched over and maintained and helped the reliability of the space shuttle main engines. I supported mission control, launching, helping launch 28 missions into space. After leaving the world of rocket science, I created my first book and inspired people to go into STEM, wrote my second book and inspired technology officials to create innovation, gave a TED-like talk at California State University just a few years ago, and spoke at technology forums across the world. But it wasn't until, and that's also a picture of me on TV when I shared this information, but it wasn't until August, 2019, where I actually had to consciously understand that I had six decisions in front of me and I didn't realize how important these decisions were until my life was at stake. Let me show you why. This is, what you're looking at is a dangerous tumor. It was found in my uterus. I went to a simple doctor's checkup and I found a fast growing tumor and the doctors warned me that something needed to be done. They didn't know if it was cancerous, they didn't know if it was benign, but they told me I needed to take action. See, I had three futures again. I could do nothing, remove just the tumors, but risk having any type of rogue tissues go inside of my entire system based on how the tumor was placed, or I could remove my full uterus. I know this is a horrible situation to go through. So here I was faced with this decision and I was in the, I still remember this day exactly. I remember I was in the waiting room at Cedar sinai My mom was there, my friend was there and I was crying and I didn't know what to do. And I heard this voice and it wasn't my mom and it wasn't my friend. And this voice was so clear in my ear and it said, remove the tumor now. Now I looked up and I didn't know what was happening and it wasn't my mom, it wasn't my friend, but I clearly heard, remove the tumor now. At the very end of this talk, I'm gonna tell you what voice that was. So I want you to log that in your memory. So I had these three futures again, do nothing, remove just the tumors or remove the full uterus. And I chose the hardest decision of all, remove the full uterus. Fortunately, uh, we caught everything while everything was benign. And uh, we saved my life because a couple of weeks later, uh, after going into the surgery, we realized that um, a couple of weeks later, I would not have been so successful. I found myself having to make these six decisions as I was going through a pandemic. And they got me through with decisions that saved my life. Now, what I'm going to show you is the groundbreaking science. That's literally gonna transform the next century. Quantum deciding is the science of making effective decisions that are independent of time and space. It is my 2021 extension of Albert Einstein's theory of quantum entanglement applied to human decision-making. And I'm really gonna break this down for you in such a profound way so you really understand how this is gonna to apply to you. You will discover your science of attraction in this talk. You're gonna see why this theory helps you with your future and you're gonna see what the six decisions are to attract what you want. So you have a science of attraction, but most people don't realize this. And 
this is what I didn't realize. We can choose the future that we want, but we have to be consciously aware that we have that choice to begin with. And this is the different areas that we make decisions in. This is a science. It's a science theory. Your decisions rotate in an energy field around you and your decisions have an electromagnetic charge that attracts opportunities. This is based on different various of science with chemistry, atoms, quantum physics. You're gonna see the, how this works. The structure is that these fields are formed from your top six past moments of fear. They also hold the potential energy to attract your better future. I'm gonna say your better future. This is what your fields consist of. There's a faith field. It's the uh, outer field that exists. It's actually an energy field that you have that represents your decisions. It's your identity, how you, how you define yourself. Now, let me go back to this one. The faith field here. The faith field is formed and it has to do with how you see yourself in the world what your purpose is, where you see yourself going in the future. It's a profound way that you actually make decisions. People with this strong field are people that we've seen in the past with like Gandhi or Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. You have an identity field. This identity is what allows you to make decisions that are independent of anyone else, independent of your mom, independent of any boss, independent of any children. When you have a high identity field, you have the ability to set your own standards and create the type of person who you've always wanted to become. Entertainers typically have a high type of identity field. We can see this through entertainers like Jennifer Lopez or, or uh, Beyonce or, or people like, or. Um, Paula Abdul, who is a, uh, also a California State University Northridge alumni. Your intent field is a field that actually grounds you to your environment. This intent field is an energy that represents how you impact environments. People with a high identity field, are, uh, uh, I should say intent field rather, with a high intent field are people who are, for example, great Olympic athletes, are able to know their physical environment to actually move in it to change and transform situations. Your learning field is how you take in information from your experiences. Your learning field is based on understanding facts and throwing out what's not accurate. People with a high learning field are, are people like Albert Einstein. These are individuals who uh, take in great amount of information and find new theories to it. And Steve Jobs was another person that, that uh, had this high ability. Resource field is how you make decisions with what you have in front of you. Do you have enough? Do you have what it takes? Individuals with a high resource field and this energy of the quantum deciding are people like uh, Bill Gates, who can take small amounts of information and expand it, or uh, the people who have built Amazon, and the list goes on and on with these billionaire mind frame people. And then lastly, it's 11 time. This is actually not a field, but it's actually rotation. Like, for example, we have a clockwise or counterclockwise rotation for each one of these fields. So these rotations each one of these fields rotate in a clockwise, let's say this is a, a, a clockwise location, or here is a counterclockwise location. Each one of these fields rotate in a certain way, and I show this mathematically. See, there's a science behind all of this, and, and for, for me, I need to see the science in order for me to believe and trust something, because when I see the science, I feel confident. So let me show you where this science comes from. Now, it comes from Albert Einstein's quantum entanglement in which I'm gonna really describe to you. It comes from my own personal past experiences. It comes from Schrodinger's light equation. 
And if you don't know anything about my background, I am Native American. I've been studying how energy works and how people heal through energy for uh, nearly two decades now. And when I combine these experiences, how energy works on a scientific realm with my personal story, as well as with my Native American heritage, I, I saw that there's this system here that is invisible that now is being brought to light. I want you to look at this particular, just, it's, do you see these rings? This is actually the rings of the inside of a tree. If you cut any tree open, you will see rings. This particular photo is rings inside of a tree. These rings inside of a tree represent there is growth within the interior of a tree. And this ring pattern is like across the entire universe. I, I was amazed when I saw this. It's how atoms are formed. And if you know anything about atoms, you have a nucleus, you have an electron, and you have orbits. The electron actually rotates around the center of an atom and there's different shells, meaning there's different rings that exist around uh, the, the atom, the nucleus of the atom. And this same ring structure is happening all across the universe. And let me show you why. This is the same ring structure. This is the horizon of Earth as as uh, astronauts are exiting Earth and going into outer space. This is the photo of the different layers of the Earth's atmosphere. This is the same ring structure. We see the same ring structure with the creation of the Earth and how the Earth is formed. We have a iron, liquid iron core here. We have uh, the the mantle here and the crust, it's, it's this ring situation again. Here the rings are around Saturn. The rings around Saturn are 100% circulating around this gigantic body in the universe. And we look at our sun, our sun has these rings around it and our planets circulate around the sun and here's these rings in a shell-like format again, but this is the sun. But then I started thinking to myself, is it just like outer space? Isn't it just the, the outside world that has this? Or is there real life examples where the rings work with humans? I mean, what does this look like? And so I started thinking, and this, this is this is what really, really amazed me. When I started looking at the chakra system and how in, in yoga and how people actually uh, meditate in the mindfulness of yoga and the seven chakra centers that's actually identified in yoga, I decided to label this out on a human the way that it would be labeled out as if it was rings in a universe. And to my surprise, the rings were almost identical. And then if, if I looked at the 12 chakra system that exists within the Native American cultures that is used within indigenous healing, and I looked at not only the seven chakras, but also the additional chakra that create a field around someone, they follow the same type of ring structure. Now, no one knew exactly where this ring structure existed. So I decided to apply mathematics and science to this concept. And I started looking at our fears. You see, your fears mark the moments in your life when time seemed to stop, right? If you can imagine the, the first time you failed a class or the first time you failed a test, that was the one of the shocking experiences. Or even the first time that you had a breakup and you broke up from your loved one, that was a shocking experience. Fears create those moments of growth in us where it actually shocks the system. The top moments of past fears 
develop these rings around you. I'm going to leave that there for a second. You see, you and I, according to my theory, have energy fields around us, and we didn't even know it. Each one of these fields around us represents a point in time from our faith, from our identity, from our intent, from our learning, from our resources and our relationships and our love and time that has marked severe, tough times, but then they have also geared us and set us up for growth. The top times that you have experienced severe fear in any one of those areas marks your opportunity that you have to attract what you want. Woo! <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm excited to share this with you. We each, according to my theory, have an opportunity for us to make decisions in each one of these areas in our lives so we start attracting what we want. See, humans have decision rings formed from fears and it marks our potential growth. We're no different than a tree, than, than a heavenly body. We're a part of a brilliant design that exists for each one of us. So why are these rings so important? I mean, why? Why do I even care? Why do I care if any of these rings happen? So let me tell us why. Because if a person has an atomic structure, now this is what's really gonna amaze you. If someone has an atomic structure, they can jump through time and space to find answers. Now, remember what I was telling you about, about Einstein's quantum entanglement. Remember that concept that I introduced us with at the beginning of this talk? That concept is going to be applied here, meaning you can jump into the future that you want and you can come back and make the decisions to get there. Meaning you can jump into the future that you want See yourself in that future, connect with yourself in that future, take on positive properties from yourself in that future and come back at this present moment and make the decisions as if you're that person already. With this theory, quant now here's, this is all for the techie people. Quantum physics properties can be applied to human decision-making and you can predict the future. That's what this means. That means that decision-making allows you to predict the future. And it also means that Albert Einstein's properties of quantum entanglement apply to you having the ability to interact with yourself in the past and in the future. And then third, you can predict where you most likely will be in the future so you can plan for it. Now, I didn't believe this myself until I actually create the math to prove it. And this is the math that proves why we can do that. This is quantum mechanics applied to human decision-making. And I call it quantum deciding. This is the theory. And just like Albert Einstein created his theory of relativity in 1916, I'm creating this theory in 2021. And probably in a hundred years, people will see that this is true. But will you wait that long or will you take action now? You see, with this self-entanglement, since you have this structure of these rings and atoms and this energy, you can actually jump through time to help yourself find answers. So you have three parts to you. I call this the tree of self. You have a past you who has gone through the toughest moments, the toughest fears, and you've done everything you could in order to get past those moments, but you still are scared. And so therefore you're making decisions that don't necessarily relate to your best future. And you have a future you. This future you is doing great stuff. 
This future you is going to uh, great lengths in your career, going to great lengths in your personal life, going to great lengths in your health, like myself. And you have the answers in the future. If you could go talk to yourself in the future, you could find out what you're doing right now, what you could do right now in order to get there. But more importantly, if you can go back to the past and coach yourself through the most pressing moments, you find the strength to move forward with your decisions. And the most important part is this part, the present you. Right now, at this very moment, no one can make decisions for you except yourself. You have the ability to make decisions by being present. The past, you can't do that. The future, you can't do that. It is you right now. The power that you have right now to connect yourself, connect the dots, connect yourself to the best future is to make the decision that you need to get there. All right. So you're probably asking, what are the six decisions for your future? What, what is this? How can I do this? All right, let me tell you the six decisions that I had to make in order to get to where I am today. Your faith field is the first field. And you have to ask yourself this question and make a decision for yourself. I can't do this. No one can do this. Your mom can't do this. Your boss can't do this. Your children can't do this. Your husband can't do this. It's only you. Do you choose to believe that your life has a purpose? That's the question for yourself. And your decision is to choose that you do have a purpose. And your decision is every single day to find out why. Why are you here? Now, you don't have to know all the math of all these, of, of the quantum deciding. All you really have to do is make these decisions and you automatically enact the mathematics naturally. So you start attracting what you want. So this first decision and this is a question that you literally ask yourself. Do I believe that I have a purpose? Your decision of yes enacts you to move forward in strength. The second question that you have for yourself is, who do you choose to be? Will you be courageous with integrity or will you be someone who cowards down in fear? This identity decision strengthens you to be unique and add value to your life. You bring something to the table no one else does. Your decision to be who you've always wanted to be allows you to enact the identity field. So you start attracting opportunities to show who you are. If you've always wanted to be a business owner, then you make a decision. I am a business owner. Like I, for example, for myself, I had to make a decision back in 2010. I was a businesswoman. It wasn't until probably several years later that I actually started bringing in considerable amounts of speaking engagements and, and, and opportunities to sell books. But I had to make that decision to begin with so I could create opportunities to attract more opportunities so I can make more decisions. You have to decide who you always want to be. The next question that you have for yourself is, Will you decide to positively change any environment that you're in? You see, you have a decision. Will you allow a situation to impact you or will you impact it? Will you change your environment? You see, we have a natural force field to us where everywhere we step, we have the ability to change situations based on our decisions. But it's only if you choose that. For will you choose to learn new things and discern the fake news from the truth? We are always given the opportunity to learn the truth. In my case, I had to learn the truth of my health to make the decision that was going to save my life. If I moved in fear, I would not have made that decision. 
I had to investigate and learn the truth from the surgeons to know exactly what I needed to do. And I had to throw out the fake news of what non-experts told me. You have the decision in front of you to know that you can learn anything and you can throw out what you don't need. The fifth decision that you have in front of you deals with your resource field. You can choose to multiply your resources no matter what you have. The greatest leaders are people who, the greatest like billionaires are people who have like started from their garage. I've seen so many different cases like this. They started from the garage and they decided to multiply what they had. And you even see the same story in the Bible. The boy brought the fish and the, the bread to Jesus Christ in the Bible and it was multiply. You must have the faith that whatever you have is going to be enough because in itself, the decision that you make in order to grow with what you have will be enough. And the last question that you have is, will you choose to love yourself and others during all of your challenges? One of the biggest things in which sometimes we do is we get hard on ourselves if we don't, do not achieve what we think, we don't earn enough money or we're not in the role that we like. And we, instead of having a strong relationship with ourselves, we start not valuing the relationship that we have to, with ourselves to know that it's going to be okay. And that relationship mirrors itself with everyone and everything around us. When you make the decision to love yourself, no matter what challenges you're going through. Now, loving yourself can be as simple as washing your dishes. It can be as simple as going outside and taking a walk. It is simple as just saying no to someone and spending time for yourself. When you choose to love yourself, you and actually just, just create an opportunity for yourself to move forward in a positive way. Now, in my book, I give exercises, specific exercises, how you can merge your thinking from the past, present, and future to attract what you want. And I, I, in my book, I show you how to go back into the past and talk yourself through the toughest moments. In my book, I show you how to go to the future and envision yourself and take notes on who you are. And also in my book, I show you how to make decisions right now based on what it is that you learned about yourself. And that, my friends, is creating your science of attraction. Remember that voice I heard in my ear that told me to remove the tumor? Almost a year later, after my surgery, I was appearing on CBS 2 News in Los Angeles, giving a talk and sharing about space launches. And I remember thinking back to my fear in that waiting room. And I decided to tell myself, you can get through this Olympia. I went back to myself a year before and I told myself, you can get through this. The voice in my ear was me one year later. I didn't realize that the six decisions that I was making to launch rockets was going to be the six decisions I was going to use in order to save my life. And it's all based on understanding that we have a powerful force within each one of our decisions. And this is the science of your free will. This is me one year later healthy, 100% healthy. My future self showed me I had more work to do on this planet and told me to remove the tumor now. Remember this one fact from this talk, your decisions can save your life and attract the life that you want. Find me on Answers Unleashed on YouTube, Twitter on Olympia LaPointe, Facebook at Olympia LaPointe and Instagram at Olympia LaPointe. And you can always check out this talk on AnswersUnleashed.com. And with that, I hope you enjoy uh, this. And I'm going to 
now stop this presentation. I thank you so much for watching this presentation, for looking at the science of quantum deciding. Now, I know you have a lot of questions and I'm going to be here answering your questions with you. You can find me on all the different links and plus two, we have some questions available for us a little bit later. And I wanna answer all the questions that, I, that you have and I really want to address any type of information. Again, this is breakthrough knowledge. You don't have to know all the science behind all this. All you have to know is the six decisions and that immediately invokes the science so you start attracting opportunities in front of you. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. I am Olympia LaPointe and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna give this, this the floor back to our moderators now. And then Christina, I'm going to give it back to you. Thank you so much, Olympia. Thank you for that. And it, it, it's so exciting talk. I, I really appreciate this. Christina. Yeah, John, I, I know that there's going to be some questions that might be coming in. I know there was a question about um, some of our viewers um, might be asking or are curious about what, what advice, Olympia, would you give to a viewer watching today of what could make them be effective decision makers in the next 12 months? Mm, that is a really great question. <laughs> so the question is, what can you do in the next month so you can actually create uh, a really good year in front of you and what can you take from this right now all right this is what i'm going to ask you to do and this is actually a really fun exercise what i want you to do is i want you to imagine yourself 12 months from now whatever it is that you whatever that it is that you see yourself doing do you see yourself graduating do yourself completing a certain coursework do you see yourself applying for a new position at your work what do you see for yourself you, you literally tap in now there's terrible things that you can see also. What I want you to do is list out all the different things that you see and cross out the ones that you don't want. Just cross them out. Just cross them out on a piece of paper and then circle all the ones that you do want for yourself. If you want more pay, if you want more career opportunities, if you want love, circle it, circle it, write it down. Then this is what I want you to do. Imagine yourself living that particular life and I want you to observe yourself. Now, this is why it's so important. When you observe yourself, you then actually connect with yourself in the future. So when you observe yourself and you've connected with yourself in the future from observing yourself, the future characteristics that got you there, you then take with you right now so you can start taking those positive characteristics with you today. So if you see yourself doing great and having a new job, great. What did you do to get there? Who did you talk to to make sure that your resume was great? Did you go to California State University Northridge Center and, and get help? Did you go to a friend? Did you go to a mentor? There are steps that you can ask your future self what you did in order to get there. Just observe yourself. And whatever you see, whatever you imagine, literally write it down. This gives you a plan of action to start taking within the next 12 months so you then connect with the future you and so you can start making decisions right now to get there. So my best recommendation is no matter where you are, start envisioning yourself where you want to be. And then that activates a natural ability that you have in your life to start attracting it. And that's tapping into the faith part of the identity decision-making process. Thank you. Thank you. And I think, Don, I think, Don, you're muted, but I think there is another question that Don wanted to ask you. Thank you, Christina. Um, Olympia, you talked about the pandemic and, and what we have gone through during the pandemic, not only as a nation, but as students and educators. Is there any crucial advice that you can give to students and faculty to really just recognize the pandemic as a, as a space for us to collect our energy and to really rethink a lot of our decisions? What advice would you give to students 
um, you know, during this pandemic and how to work through that as well? Ooh, that's a great question. I love it. <laughs> Thank <Okay>. you. <laughs> Um, uh, the pandemic has been horrible, hasn't it been? It's been absolutely horrible. It's been like we've, it's like not only have we seen horrible deaths, we've seen uh, people's lives upended. We've seen people lose work. We've seen horrible things happen. And naturally this causes fear. Now this fear is a disguised opportunity. You might sound what? Anytime we experience severe shifts in our, in our ways of operating, let's say, then everyone's experiencing this right now collectively. That means that we have the ability to start creating more future opportunities that are even better than what we have experienced in the past. So for the students who have gone through a terrible experience and you can't be on campus anymore, this is an opportunity for you to master virtual technology. The reason why this is going to be so crucial is because in the future, you're going to have, you're going to apply for jobs and create for job, create jobs that deal with virtual technology. That's going to be your specialty. Whatever you go through and whatever challenge that you have to learn, it's going to be your strength. Whatever you are experiencing with, let's say if you're an instructor and if you're scared to go back to campus, that is a, a true concern with most instructors right now. And, and that is an opportunity for us to understand that there's virtual learning that can be superior to anything that we've ever seen before. You could be an instructor that creates the next online learning platform that millions of people are going to go to. You may partner or work with one of those organizations who are creating this type of future visionary online work. See, we all have gone through horrible type of situations, but any, in, in my theory, what we've gone through in the past gives us a field around us so we can start making decisions to change what we are experiencing. Any, and I really want you to remember this and take this home with you. Whatever tough things you're experiencing, like I've gone through a lot too, whatever tough things you are experiencing, it is for your growth and it is for an opportunity that you would have never, ever expected. But you have to look at these tough situations as an opportunity for you to increase knowledge, increase your resources, increase your learning, increase I said that already, increase your intent, how are you going to change the situation for the better, increase your faith and increase your identity. Who are you going to be during all this? Because that growth and that period is going to attract far better than you have ever acknowledged or even known, but it depends on you making the decision for that. Thank you so much, Olympia. <clears throat> Excellent advice. Excellent advice for our students that are navigating this pandemic landscape. We had another question from Hannah who asked about, and I'm just going to quote her, I am wondering, do you think the field circling around us and the planet also exists in the heart? And could you look at mathematics and see what connections there may be? Well, I would say absolutely yes. There's great theories that exist that every single mass structure has a field around it because everything is made up of atoms and atoms have this quantum structure. And if everything is made up of atoms, every single thing that is living has a field, including the heart, including a, a person, including a planet. It's the energy that we can't see. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that we ha can't identify it yet, haven't named it and haven't measured it. So the great news about science is that Science starts naming things that sometimes are hidden through whatever reason. And when you can name it, like what I did with quantum deciding, you can then start to look for it. And then you can start trying to find a way to measure it. So, yeah. That's excellent, Olympia. Thank you for that. Um, as we close out this event, we had one last question that, that I think is so important to scholars and educators and, and, and students is from Genesis Rodriguez. She asked, how do you preserve and protect your own energy? And, and I know that we speak about this. 
mm. um, from people who may do you harm or are jealous of you. What advice do you have that for them? Ooh, that's such a great question. I Thank know. You. I was so happy when Genesis put that in the box. <laughs> Because we think about your questions. Yeah, yeah, these are. This is good. I think we need to just do a whole nother session with just yes, questions. Yeah, stay All tuned right. for that. We're doing that. <laughs> do you know what? You have no responsibility for other people's decisions or feelings at all. The only person you have control over is your own decisions and actions. And what you do naturally impacts somebody else. So it's best that you know how to really take hold of your own decision making. And I'm a firm believer that psychological counseling is one of the best ways to be able to keep your energy high. Meaning uh, just this is regular psychological counseling. I've gone through it myself. When I went through my triggering horrible moments in the past, I had to talk to counselors to understand what, what are my decisions that I have in front of me? What is the way in which I can look at the situation and look at the past differently? For example, um, if I've gone through very triggering situations in the past, and I remember going back in the past and seeing, and I'll just put it out there. I had to see my attacker. I actually had to see myself in that type of situation. And the counselor actually helped me see myself in the situation and then take ownership of my decision in that situation. And then immediately I was able to be in the situation in the past and realize I made the best decision at that moment in time and I needed to congratulate myself. See, each one of us have gone through really tough things in the past. And when we have other people who are critical around us, it's because we are sometimes critical of ourselves in the past and we haven't completely embraced who we were in the past and recognized the growth of where we are today. So one of the best ways to keep your own energy up is to recognize you are still human, you are still growing, you don't always have it perfect, but you're learning and you're making decisions every single day to move forward towards the, the direction that you want. When you do that, when you acknowledge that, you then naturally create this field around you that starts attracting the love and support that you need in your situations. And it's simple. It's very simple, just psychological counseling. Or if you don't do psychological counseling, you can find a mentor. You can find someone to point you to the truth. So you can start seeing your life in such a profound way that it can't be distorted through anyone else's vision. Because remember, you connect with yourself. And this is the power. I truly believe this is the God-given power of our free will. Olympia, this is great. I, I'm so grateful that you shared this knowledge with faculty, with educators, with our audience at, at CSUN. And as an alumni of CSUN, I'm so honored. Honored for your wisdom. So thank you, everybody that has, has shared space with us tonight. And we hope that you come back and, and utilize Olympia's um, knowledge. She's made herself available to you online. So again, um, this is fabulous. Thank you. Any last words, Olympia, before we close out this event? Anything? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Do you know what, Dawn and, and everyone at California State University Northridge alumni and the California State University Northridge and all of uh, the people tuning in from, from Germany to the, the UK to the United States, I, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming and looking at this information. This information is going to be available on my website, answersunleashed.com slash virtual talks. And if you want to pick up the book, you can go to answersunleashed.com slash books. And there you'll see all the different Answers Unleashed educational science books that I have. And I just thank you for all of your support. And I, I love you. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much, Olympia. We are honored that you shared your expertise, your knowledge with us. Thank you for coming back to CSUN in this virtual environment, but coming back to your roots in that sense. Um, before we close out our time together, I just want to take this opportunity to say that we do have a few upcoming webinars that are scheduled. You could find them on our website, csun.edu slash alumni. You go to the events calendar section. We have one coming up on preparing for the interview and then the art of salary negotiation. 
You could register for those, registration's open. And again, this webinar is gonna be made available on our website. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we hope you found this extremely helpful as I did, and we'll see you again next time.